The pinnacle of Satan's rebellion in heaven was when he rebelled against the position God gave him, right? And tried to have himself ordained to the position that God had not given him. Now, Scripture doesn't use the word ordained, but am I correct in using that here? Because was Christ's position ordained? Well, certainly. In his pride and arrogance, Satan said, I will ascend into heaven. I will what? The key word is, I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. I will be like the Most High. Do you hear any echoes of that right now? I will also sit behind the pulpit on the mount of the congregation. And I'm not opposed to women coming up front. Don't get me wrong here. I'm not opposed to women in ministry. There was one church. I'm going to give you this example. One church that I know of. Where this happened. There were no women or even little children, little girls, allowed on the platform. Period. None. And needless to say, that didn't work out too long. And that's not biblical, friends. That's not biblical. Even public speaking for women, Ellen White was very clear. I have no issue with that. I think the scriptures are very clear. Satan goes on to say, you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the Mount of Congregation on the farthest sides of the north. Do you know what that means? The very highest point. You look very carefully in both Scripture and Ellen White, and you will find that that is where the very throne of God is. What does church represent? Why do we have a pulpit? Why is it that this area here is considered to be special? Where do we get those ideas from? It's the Old Testament sanctuary, which gives us a picture into the very throne of God and the heavenly sanctuary, isn't it? So I want to get you thinking. If you see an attack happening here with the model of the Old Testament sanctuary, which was a type of the heavenly sanctuary, where does this attack extend to? It may extend all the way to the heavenly sanctuary. It's an attack on doctrine, friends, and it's very subtle. Only a clear discernment of spiritual things that the, that the original apostasy can be understood. The controversy in heaven began with selfish strife for position. A desire on the part of Lucifer to be what? Oh, equal with God. The disaffection of Satan to entertain the thought that he should stand as head. Oh, there it is. Good parallel here, isn't it? As head of the heavenly order at first seemed a small thing. Sound like our history, friends. But by dwelling upon this thought, it was strengthened. Step by step, Satan miscalculated the position that had been assigned to him by God to be maintained only in God until he finally came to look with enmity upon everything from Jesus Christ. Now before I go on, I want to just bring to light the parallel. Because I have seen this multiple times now recently, where in scoffing tones, I have seen and heard pastors and even other leaders say, well, that's just the general conference, and we're just going to kind of do whatever we want. It's the same parallel, friends. And when they start scoffing at the polity or policy of the general conference, friends, I want to warn you, because they're not going to stop with one thing. They never do. There'll be more. 
You wait till we're into the small time of trouble, and this dynamite is going to go off. And only those who are, have taken a firm stand in Jesus Christ and in his word and are truly loyal to their church are going to see their way through this. Satan rebelled against the laws governing the heavenly intelligences. This is the same thing. He tried to reinterpret God's law. Polity. He tried to reinterpret the polity of the throne. Do you catch that? And I'm not saying the general conference is God's throne. But Ellen White says it could be the voice of God on earth when they're assembled. We dare not mess, do we? Now, he... He um, rebelled against the laws governing the heavenly intelligences, and by representing these in a deceptive light, he started categorizing, name-calling, right? Changing things a little. By his unbelief and complaints, he drew others with him into rebellion. This is truly rebellion, friends. We're going to see more. And it will get worse. And I'm just looking at what I see here from the very fall of Lucifer. Did what the angels decide matter when it came to Satan's rebellion? Does what we decide matter when it comes to matters like this, if they are indeed rebellion? Okay. All the heavenly hosts were summoned to appear before the Father. This is serious, friends. To have each case determined, every angel. Now, this is a judgment of the living if I've seen one. Satan unblushingly made known his dissatisfaction that Christ should be preferred before him. He stood up proudly and urged that he should be equal with God and should be taken into conference with the Father and understand his purposes. How come I can't do the sermon and be ordained? Oh, and I'm so wrong. That's what he was saying, wasn't he? God informed Satan that to his son alone he would reveal his secret purposes and he required all the family of heaven, even Satan, to yield implicit, unquestioned obedience, but that he, Satan, had proved himself unworthy a place in heaven. Then Satan exultingly pointed to his sympathizers. This is how rebellion always works, friends. The leader builds it up. They get to the point where there's a head-on conflict. And it's coming, friends. A head-on conflict. And he turned to his sympathizers and he pointed to them, comprising nearly one half of all of the angels. That's tense, isn't it? How many virgins? Five and five. Total of ten. Five on each side of the question, weren't there? And he exclaimed, these are with me. Will you expel these also and make such a void in heaven or in the church? It's quiet, isn't it? Do you see the point that I'm making? Do you see why I'm so concerned about my church? I love my church. He then declared that he was prepared to resist the authority of Christ and to defend his place in heaven by force of might, strength against strength. What if, what if, friends, in the middle of our church bickering over this and it leading up to even, say, you know, the GC session coming up, okay, because we know it's going to be discussed there, etc. What if into this powder keg of this issue you also threw all the issues we have in the church with music and dress and diet and health reform and a load of other issues 
And what if that, right in the middle of that, and we're busy fighting, you drop the match of Sunday Law? Natural disasters on a scale happening around the globe that scare men so badly they say these are the judgments of God. And I'm not talking about the seven last plagues. What if that happened? What do you have in the church right then? An explosion. You have the scenes taking place exactly like Ellen White says, the church may appear to fall, but will not. You see terrible scenes of shaking. You see the scenes that Christ himself talked about in Matthew 24. Brother against brother. Family against family. Persecutions. You see the turning over of... Uh, I'll, just, I'll just say it. You see treason in the ranks. This is serious, friends. It really is serious. Um, I think a lot of people don't understand how serious this is in our church. By our estimates, about 80% of the people in the church at lay level just don't care. They're not informed and they don't care. So here's a thought. One third of the angels united with Satan in the rebellion against their ordained positions in heaven. I'm going to add that word ordained because they were ordained to those positions. I mean, is that fair to say? Now, originally, it was one half, okay, when the rebellion began, all right? The shaking may have a very similar parallel on a number of issues. Ordination may be just one of them. But I will say, if this is a good type, okay, or a parallel, it could be that in context, we see that some may decide, even though they're on one side of the equation at first, as they become informed about the scriptural aspects of these things, they may be led to fully take a stand for scripture and for Christ. And I actually know people even here that have come to this church who have said those things recently. They were on one side of the coin, they went to GYC, and it changed everything. And it was, it was unique listening to their testimony.